Have you ever wondered what is underneath El Primo's mask? Well, today we got some leaked footage sent from <laughs> Supercell HQ and oh my god. Stop the cameras. We can't show this on YouTube. Hello fellow brawlers, I'm Kyra Simon. and it is time to brawl now today. I've heard some really good responses that you guys like the brawler guides that I've done for both Nita and Barley. So today we're going to be coming out with El Primo. We're going to do a quick review of his mechanics, a more in-depth look at his stats, talk about the best game modes and maps to push him up to 500 trophies as quickly as possible. And of course guys, we're going to save some Primo tech and how to counter Primo for the end of the video. So make sure you stick around because believe it or not, He's actually incredibly easy to counter. If you'd like to see me do a guide similar to this for another brawler in Brawl Stars, make sure you drop a comment in the section below letting me know which brawlers, and then also subscribe so you don't miss it. For El Primo's basic attack, Fists of Fury, El Primo punches four consecutive shots with a very short range. Because it does take time for him to unload all four shots, it is best to follow the movement patterns of the enemy brawler. Otherwise, they might move so that his punches don't actually land. El Primo's attacks do pierce through objects and brawlers, so make sure you do utilize that when there is an opportunity for you to hit more than one brawler at a time. For El Primo's super flying elbow drop, El Primo jumps into the air and lands on enemy brawlers dealing damage to them, knocking them back and destroying walls. One of the biggest benefits of his super is actually how quickly it charges up if you land on someone and throw out a few more attacks. You can easily chain supers over and over again if you use it correctly, and honestly when you first pick up the game I actually highly recommend just auto aiming his super almost every time, with the exception of when enemy brawlers are actually very far away from you. In that case, it is better for you to manually aim his super. There are a lot of really cool things that you can do with El Primo super, and we're going to talk more in depth about it later on in the video when we cover Primo advanced tech. When El Primo reaches max level, he unlocks his star power L. El Fuego, which means the fire. With his star power, when El Primo lands on a brawler with his super, they light on fire, receiving four ticks of 150 damage, tallying a total of 600 damage. This only provides a bit of extra damage. It can be helpful in some circumstances, but I wouldn't recommend purchasing his star power very early on because typically if an El Primo is good enough to land on an enemy brawler, then he's just going to be able to punch them in extra time, and that's that's basically going to deal the same amount of damage as his star power. Now let's take a look at El Primo's stats and see how they compare to every single other brawler in the game. El Primo is the highest ranked in uh, two categories, okay? Uh, he has the highest HP in the game, tied with Frank, and he has the fastest reload speed in the game, Almost tied with Frank, just slightly just slightly better. Aside from Bull with his star power, he is actually tied for first with Pam in having the highest damage per second in the game, which is not actually considered on this chart because it's just a combination of attack and reload speed. But he is literally the tankiest brawler in the game with literally the highest offensive capability as well. Not to mention the fact that he can actually charge up his super in only three full attacks. Shout out to my man Galadon. His movement speed isn't the highest, but it's also faster than the majority of the brawlers in the game. It's pretty obvious to see that El Primo has a ton of huge strengths, making him a monster when it comes to his stats with one huge weakness that all of his strengths hinge upon. He has the shortest range in the game. And this actually reveals everything you need to know about countering El Primo, but we'll talk about the specifics on that later in this video. Now let's talk about El Primo's ease of use early on and skill cap later on in the game. For ease of use, I would give El Primo a 5 out of 5, meaning that it is incredibly easy for you to just get into the game, pick him up, and go play with him. This is because his regular attack is super strong, and only the most skilled players will actually get a benefit out of manually aiming their shots with him. When people first jump into the game this makes El Primo seem incredibly strong because they don't know how to counter him. But would you believe that before the game when Global and Brawl Star people were begging for a buff? to El Primo because he was one of the weakest in the game. That's right guys, later on in the game, once people actually learn how to counter El Primo, he actually really struggles due to his short range, which makes him primarily useful only on maps with lots of walls or bushes. For El Primo's skill cap, I would rank it a 2 out of 5, meaning that it you reach it fairly soon in comparison to most brawlers. Unless you're very serious about becoming a pro, you can mostly use auto aim with El Primo for a very long time, but there does come a point where it is actually more beneficial for you to manually aim your shots with El Primo. The biggest hurdle to master 
mastering El Primo doesn't come with learning how to aim, but learning how to use walls and grass to approach enemy brawlers without taking damage along the way. Okay guys, let's go ahead and talk about El Primo's best modes and maps, as well as the best way for you to push him up to 500 trophies and beyond. For modes and maps, please note that my recommendations are for pushing El Primo consistently and competitively up to 500 trophies and beyond. If there are lots of new players playing at the time, you could probably honestly play him anywhere, but I can guarantee you that that meta will actually adapt as uh, more people become more experienced at the game. Here we can take a look at El Primo's graphics showing the best modes for him to be played in. As you can see, I would not recommend playing him in Bounty. He can play, be played in Duo Showdown in early trophies, um, but I wouldn't actually recommend playing him at past 300 in Duo Showdown with the exception of maybe Feast or Famine or Cavern Churn if you were playing with a maxed bow on your team. In Heist, El Primo can be played in a Bone Tunnel pretty well, uh, but the other maps he tends to struggle a little bit on. El Primo can be pushed in Showdown with either the Survival Strategy or the Arnold Strategy. However, he does really struggle if there are lots of enemy players that are actually teaming because El Primo is definitely one of the first targets to groups of teamers. If you don't see a lot of people teaming up through 500 trophies, he can absolutely be played up through 500 trophies. But if you do start seeing a lot of teaming, he might be better off being played in different game modes. In Showdown, his best maps are going to be Feast or Famine or Walk Wall Brawl and possibly Cavern Churn if you're a very patient and very defensive El Primo. I recommend always checking the bush and in Cavern Churn, there's just too much bush. For Gem Grab, El Primo plays an important role as an aggro brawler where it is his job to either cover the left or the right side of the map, sneak up on the enemy's side and keep them pushed back while you take them out. It is his job to keep enemies from getting to your gem carrier and he should not be used as a primary gem carrier because if he has the majority of the gems, there's almost nothing that he can really do uh, because it's too risky for him to go on the offense because of his short range. I would not recommend playing El Primo on most gem grab maps. He is only on good maps with lots of walls that allow him to safely make his way to the enemy side of the map, including Chill Cave, Deep Siege, Hard Rock Mine, Maybe, and Stone Fort. Future Kairos would also like you to know that he can also be played on Death Cap Cave. Once you do get up to 400 trophies, your best place is going to be pushing him in Brawl Ball. And in Brawl Ball, his primary role is to be a ball carrier. As a ball carrier, it's your primary goal to try and shoot the ball into the goal with uh, any means necessary. But just because you are the ball carrier doesn't necessarily mean that you should not pass it to teammates. The goal is to win, not to be the star. That being said, typically your teammates should try to create opportunities for you to either kick the ball or walk it into the goal. El Primo is useful on all maps with Backyard Bowl being his weakest due to it being an open map. Still, if you're careful enough, he can still be a valid option there. Okay guys, let's go ahead and go on to advanced El Primo tech and then we will finish off with how to counter El Primo. For El Primo super, the time that he spends in the air depends on the distance that he is jumping. El Primo has a shorter air time when he jumps close and a longer time when he jumps far. This gives El Primo the option of doing a quick body slam immediately next to him and this extra knockback and damage is the reason why when two Primos are facing off against each other, the first to charge up their super and use it is usually the one that wins. There are several ways for you to use El Primo's super and we're going to list them from least optimal to most optimal. The least optimal for El Primo to use his super is to break walls. The reason why this is not very effective is because El Primo wants to utilize those walls so that he can get closer to enemy brawlers. The exceptions to this are if he is able to break down the walls right next to the heist safe or in front of a brawl ball goal so there's an easier access to the win condition. The second way to use El Primo's super and also a less effective way to use it is to escape from enemy brawlers. You shouldn't use this very frequently because El Primo's super can be very difficult for you to charge up due to him struggling at long distances. Primarily, his super should be used to get close to enemy brawlers, not to get away from them. However, there are some benefits to using his super in this way. Specifically, if you happen to like grab a few gems and you're the countdown starts and you need to get away from enemy brawlers, like obviously that's a good way to use it. But most of the time you should use El Primo's in the following two ways. The next way is as a way to deal additional damage. While this is a beneficial way to use his super, uh, it should be done with ca caution, and there are two reasons why. First of all, El Primo's regular attack reloads so quickly that most of the time you don't need that additional damage, but there are some situations where it can be useful. The second reason why is because typically, once you slam down on an enemy brawler, they're not going to have very much HP left, and you want to actually kind of utilize their HP so that you can recharge the super afterward. But the most effective way to use El Primo's super consistently is as a way to bridge the gap between him and long-range brawlers. Typically, this is the best way because you can actually recharge his super so quickly if he can get close to the enemy brawlers, and it helps overcome his weakness of being a poor fighter at long range. There are a lot of other different ways that you can actually use El Primo's super, but most notably are the uses in Brawl Ball, where when he actually has the ball, he can kick it 
jump to where he kicked it, and then score a goal. This is really beneficial, especially like on those maps where there's a wall in front of the goal because you can kick it to the wall, jump on it, and then kick it in without enemy players actually expecting that. Additionally, when he does this, he can actually land on those enemy brawlers, which will knock them back and knock the ball out of their hands so that he can then pick it up and score it really quickly. I mentioned earlier how El Primo's attacks pierce. This makes it easy for you him to actually take out two or more people if you jump on them, but it's also especially beneficial in heist where you can actually keep the heist safe between you and the enemy brawler so that when you're punching, you can actually hit the safe and the enemy brawler while they try to get close up to you. Also, this makes it very beneficial for El Primo on Showdown where he can actually use the boxes as a shield against brawlers like Shelly and Bull who are typically good counters against El Primo. It's important to know which brawlers El Primo is faster than and which brawlers are slower than El Primo. El Primo is slower than Crow, Mortis, and Leon as well as a maxed Colt. He is equally fast with Daryl, Frank, and Bull, and he is faster than any of the other brawlers in the game. This is important because you are, if you are within half of a tile from reaching a brawler, it is worth it for you to keep chasing after them because you will catch up. If you are further than that, you may actually want to consider falling back until it's uh, you're in a better position to actually take them out. Okay guys, now it's time to talk about how to counter El Primo. When you first jump into the game, El Primo can seem very, very strong, but I can assure you that there are really great ways for you to counter El Primo based off of two important strategies. Map aware awareness and distance. Map awareness is as simple as paying attention to where your teammates and the enemy players are. If an El Primo is giving you a hard time, it is very important for you to always pay attention to where he is or where he was last seen, or if there are bushes. As long as you are aware where he's at, all you have to do is keep your distance from El Primo and he will never be able to touch you. Skilled players will never let El Primo actually get close enough to where that he can actually charge up his super, but if he does charge up his super, distance is especially important. Remember that it takes time for El Primo to land with his super at max distance. So staying at his max range from his jump makes it so that there's actually plenty of time for you to move out of the way once you see him supering. This is very easy for brawlers who can deal consistent damage from all ranges like Poco, Nita, or Frank, or because there's no missed damage from staying at max range with them. For brawlers like Shelly or Terra, who do more damage at a close range, you need to make a little bit of a sacrifice from your damage in order for you to keep that distance, which will definitely increase your survivability. The brawlers that struggle the most against El Primo are going to be your brawlers that have high burst potential, but have really slow reload speeds. So we're talking like Piper or Brock. Brawlers like these, you really need to learn to practice your aim and especially keep your distance from him. If El Primo does get too close to you, all hope is not lost. It's just almost all lost. <laughs> the reason why it's not all lost is that El Primo takes time to release his shots and he will fire all four punches in a straight line. So the worst thing that you can do is actually run directly away or directly to that El Primo, unless your brawler happens to be faster than El Primo and you can get away, so like a, a Crow or a Leon or a Mortis. Instead, what you want to do is you actually want to circle around El Primo so that half of his punches actually miss you, so that this can actually cut his damage in half. Anyways guys, I hope you enjoyed this video, it was a ton of fun to make. Once again, let me know which brawlers you want to see future brawler guides on like this, and subscribe so you don't miss. For now, this is Karo's time ticking by, and we will see you in Brawl Stars.